Hello again. So this morning I want to talk about um, hidden and um, hidden and visible. So yesterday I think I said that I uh, went out to Tesco's with um, with Bodhi Badra. Anyway, I can't stand up for long, so I did half the shop with him, and then I went and sat in the car. And while I was sitting in the car, I was just watching as people arrived um, to do their shopping. And um, I noticed quite a difference between um, older people, people that might be um, more obviously vulnerable, and the feelings that they had around um, being out, which is some of them look quite frightened. They looked like they wanted to get it done as soon as possible and get home again. And then there were other people that didn't look like that at all. So one person in particular that um, caught my eye was uh, a young chap in the uh, pride of youth. And uh, yeah, he had his phone with him. He walked up to the, the door and um, they'd arranged it at Tesco so that the entrance and the exit were at different places. So the doors were open and he just went in the exit instead of the entrance. And he was very self-absorbed and, you know, into his mobile and so on. And he almost brushed against these, um, these elderly couple, this elderly couple, you know, and they looked sort of aghast, naturally enough. And he was just oblivious. And it, it just uh, had me thinking about, well, you know how things shoot through your mind so quickly and I thought gosh if there if we knew that there were a lot of tigers on the loose that had escaped from a zoo or something like that you know we would um, we would be much more um, well we we'd be much more aware we'd be on the lookout and we would be much more careful whatever age we were so yeah it's um, I'm not criticizing that that young man because actually you know the pride of youth and the pride of good health means that uh, when we're young we we do feel pretty invincible and we are uh, more self-absorbed on the whole it's natural you know because death seems a very long way from us but yeah I thought imagine if we really thought there might be um, a lot of tigers roaming around, you know, we would be aware of our life hanging in the balance in that way, you know, and yet we had to go out and buy food, say. But because this uh, coronavirus is so hidden, it's easy to become complacent about it and also to think that, you know, it's other people that die, it's not ourselves, it's, it's always other people. And I think we all tend, tend towards that, you know. I've certainly thought at times, you know, about how healthy I am and, okay, I'm not young anymore, but I'm very healthy. So, yes, that got me thinking about our everyday lives and what is hidden and, and what is more self-evident. So, um, what is hidden is the dangers, if you like, of, um, well, the th basically the three poisons that's hidden from us, um, greed, hatred and delusion. You know, we don't see it as it really is. So we don't see the dangers of them. So if we take something like aversion, hatred, um, you know, we have our, our likes and our dislikes, we fall out with people and we don't often consider that actually um, well, would we want to die with um, having created an unpleasant scene or, or being at odds with somebody, you know, not, not having resolved, um, not having resolved our quarrels. And so it's really important to, to bear that in mind. And I think a lot of it, well, probably all of us are really full of, of love at the moment, actually, love and concern, you know, love that, um, well, we wish the best for everybody. You know, we hear these, um, you know, we hear figures like from yesterday, it was over 900 people that had died. And um, it's, it's just so sobering. So I think a lot of love and compassion comes up in us. You know, what can we do? There have been hundreds, thousands of people that are 
volunteering in all sorts of ways to help others, even though um, they're taking a risk to be doing that. Um, yes, and the risk of, of craving, you know, I was saying yesterday that there is no end to craving. Once we um, respond to something we want, maybe we've waited a long time for it, maybe we've saved up for it, but when we've got it, there's something else appears on the horizon that we also want. So there is no end to craving. And the truth is, we can't take anything with us when we die. You know, we can't take friends, people, our loved ones, and we certainly can't take any material goods. So we spend an awful lot of energy, we expend an awful lot of energy and time in our lives building up Um, well, I suppose you'd call it security, building up some sort of security that we think is going to um, protect us in some way, or going to protect our children in some way. And, um, well, you know, you can get to the end of your life and realise, you know, what have I spent my life doing? You know, perhaps it's working too hard. Perhaps we're addicted to um, being busy all the time. And it doesn't matter how busy we are, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of, of our lives, we can't take anything with us except, except for our skillfulness, our good deeds, and any other deeds not just good deeds, but also our unskillfulness. So as you know, these samskaras, these deep samskaras within us, that um, is what we're, they're what we're working on in our current life. You know, if we want to know how we got to be like we are today, look at our body, speech and mind actions of the past and our body, speech, and mind actions of the present will determine um, our future samskaras. It will influence those. It's not easy to talk about um, this life in terms of uh, being one of many because I know that, you know, in the West here, uh, we are, it, it's not an idea that, that fits easily with us unless we've had some sort of experience ourselves that has suggested there may be other lives. So, you know, I'm not asking you to believe anything, but I think we could have an open mind because we don't know. We just don't know. Um, but also that don't know is, um, well, it has some comfort within us because we assume that life, that death is going to be an unpleasant experience perhaps. You know, that we are, because we're quite afraid of death, we're quite afraid of losing what we've got at the moment. But we've got no evidence that there's not something equally, you know, equally as as pleasant and unpleasant as life is today. So we've got no evidence. So all we can do really is to keep an open mind on it. But these um, samskaras that operate within us, um, are determining our future and it really matters our body speech and mind actions you know in a way it's easier to um, change our actions of body it's harder to change our speech and even harder to change our mind because we think that our mind is private within us and it doesn't make you know it doesn't really matter what does it matter what we think well it does matter because it's sowing seeds all the time. So just like imagining, you know, this virus is just as dangerous, more dangerous probably, than those tigers, because we never know uh, where it's going to pop up next. We can't see it, it has no visible form. But in the same way, our own thoughts, our own intentions, um, the love or otherwise that we have for other beings, they they have an effect. And um, 
seeing the consequences of our actions is, is really important and seeing that we can make a difference, that we can um, we can use this time to really develop our love and compassion. So yes, that's my ramble for today and um, I hope there's some something in there that resonates with you. And I'll see you tomorrow.